Hello, welcome. This is Lane Lovestone here. Today we'll be tacking up Ichabod Crane. He's the cantering warm blood mold by Briar Horses. And I have this lovely close contact set to tack him up in. So this is a set I made. It's currently available for sale. Um, it's a close contact two-tone set. It was built on uh, the Briar Bristol. So it's supposed to be a jumping type saddle. And we're going to try it on Ichabod Crane here. So this is the cantering warm blood mold. So I'm going to put the saddle on here and then uh, do this girth up. So this horse is quite girthy. It's got quite a large girth. Um, this girth is just maybe a bit too short. I'll probably include a girth extender in this set so that, you know, this is a little bit easier. As you can see, it's a just a, it's long enough, but just on the edge where this is a little bit difficult for me to do up the girth. So girth extender just is uh, another set of buckles and uh, like some uh, leather straps that will extend the girth. It will make it a little bit bigger so that these girthier models, it, the girth will fit in. I was actually kind of surprised at how that the girth on the Bristol was a bit small actually. So I was expecting something a little bit bigger. Most warm bloods have a bigger girth. So as this guy is the cantering warm blood, his girth is a, a bit bigger. So uh, my best uh, strategy for putting on these girths is to hold the uh, buckle itself. So on the elastic part of the girth stretch it up and then kind of weave through the uh, the belay strap so we got the first one on there and working on the second one so I just like hold the the girth there kind of it's ca kind of tough to do it from this angle as I most of the time when I'm girthing up a, a model horse I actually have the horse on my lap so this is me trying to do it in front of the camera here. It's a little bit more difficult to try to hold the model itself, the saddle down, and then the belay straps as well. So I just try to feed the belay strap through the buckle. Now these are our roller buckles on this girth, so it does make it a little bit easier to put on. Once you have the belay strap through the buckle, it's uh, quite easy to pull it up and a good another good trick on to you know kind of fiddle around with these buckles is to use your pliers so that's what I'm doing here I'm just gonna use my needle nose pliers try to feed the strap up sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't sometimes it's easier just to use your fingers but uh, sometimes on these trickier girths I'll use a uh, the um, pliers here to just kind of try to basically the reason I'm using the plier is just the once I get the uh, belay fed through the buckle there's like a tiny little portion sticking out and I want to grab that tiny little portion and pull it upwards so that I can feed it through better um, sometimes that little tab that goes through is just like a little too tiny like tiny for the fingers so it helps to have some pliers on hand all right so have that done there now uh, another trick with putting on girths and even any buckles at all is to pull upwards so when you are feeding it through you're trying to tighten up the strap or you're trying to undo the buckle is to pull the strap upwards at the buckle so that it um, it will release easier it's the same when you're kind of trying to thread the the buckle tongue through the um, the little hole there is to pull upwards Okay, so the next thing I want to put on this horse is the breast collar. So that goes over the horse's head here. And the 
first thing I usually do when I put on a breast collar is attach the, uh, the buckle to the girth. Now this is a stud protector girth, but it has also a D-ring on the end so that I can put the breast collar on. And now I want to put uh, attach the breast collar to the saddle itself. So there's some D-rings on the saddle that these attach to. One side on and the other side. Uh, those just slip right on the D-rings here. These uh, can sometimes be fiddly as well and the plier trick works easy with those two if you're having a hard time feeding those on. So we have the breast color on. Now, usually when I'm tacking up a real horse, the bridle is the last thing I'm going to put on it. But in this case, I'm going to put the bridle on next. We still have some boots to put on after this. So put the bridle on here. What I want to do first is put the nose band through. I generally won't undo the, the, nose, the nose portion of the nose band, so I can just slip it right on. And then I'll slip the crown piece over the ears. Now I'm just going to check to make sure that my bit pieces are going to be equal and proper fitting for this model and make sure my nose band is proper fitting as well. So making sure it's proper fitting around the nose and then over the crown piece as well. So you want to make sure that it's just below the cheekbones. You don't want the, the nose band on the cheekbones. You want it just below and nice and uh, snug but not too tight either. So just feeding those through the keepers now for that nose band crown piece there. Okay, so that's on there. So a nose band is usually what I'll do first. And then I'll just check my my uh, sizing and fit for the um, the bit crown piece. So that's the part that goes from one side of the bit over the ears, over the pole to the other side of the bit. This measurement so is a little bit tricky. You want to make sure that the horse is going to be on the bit without too much looseness over the crown. Of course, we're not actually putting any bits in these horses' mouths. They're uh, tacky wax on. So what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of tacky wax on the corner of the mouth and then stick the bit to the tacky wax. I was already prepared with the tacky wax for this tacking up, so... And I had to adjust this crown piece just one shorter because I felt like it was a bit loose for what it should be. You know, usually when you're fitting a bit in a horse's mouth, like in real life, you want to make sure they have like a slight smile with English bridles. So... Um... Basically, I want to make sure that we can kind of gain the same effect through model horses. So I did uh, tighten this crown piece one more just so that it's not as loose as it was. And then the next thing to put on is the throat latch. So with the throat latch, um, with a jumping bridle, you want to make sure it is a little bit tighter than most throat latches, but it's not super tight. So you have to think like in model scale, this, this throat latch needs to be tight enough that it's not going to be flapping around, but it's not too tight that it's choking the horse and they need to have free movement. Okay, so that's all on there. And then the next thing to do when you're putting a bridle on is to adjust the reins. So I'm just pulling out my tacky wax here. 
getting a little glob of tacky wax for the rain. And then I want to hold the rain up to where I want it to go and then kind of judge where I'm going to put the tacky wax on the horse's neck so that I can stick the rein on and then make it stay there and it looks like it's being held by a rider. By, by an imaginary rider. <laughs> As we know, uh, some people do use dolls with model horses. I generally don't. Um, one, because I don't have any dolls, but two, because I I like tack. I'm, you know, I, the dolls block the tack. You can't see it. <laughs> so just adjusting this rein here, trying to make sure it stays. It didn't really want to stay where, where I'd put the tacky wax. And I think it was because it was kind of in a place that was, um, I guess, just like, a shallower place on the neck so that it wouldn't it wasn't sticking out enough to be able to hold so I'm gonna put so same with this one put that tacky wax on the neck pull the pull the rein up set it in place here you can see it's not really sticking on this side so when the horse is actually turning its head inwards so it's actually um, that was kind of the cause of why it wasn't sticking on. It's because it was like sort of shallower than the other side. It wasn't sticking out enough. So as you can see, every time I put it up there, try to adjust the other side, it's falling down. So uh, fairly simple troubleshooting there. If you're having that problem, I'll just apply more tacky wax. This is always frustrating when you're at a live show when your reins aren't staying, but uh, in this setting we can kind of be more, more calculated about it, I suppose. So yeah, I'm going to put some more tacky wax on there. Just to make it hold a little better make the the tacky wax spot uh, like a little bit um, like stick out a little bit more so that we can keep like make sure it stays okay so next thing is the boots so these are magnetic boots uh, what I want to do to make sure that they're on the right, si uh, right side is uh, I want the buckles outwards and I want them facing uh, like backwards. So like I want them to clasp backwards. So I'm going to look at the boots, look at the model and just make sure that they're clasping on the outside and towards the back of the horse. Now the front ones are ankle boot, or sorry, the front ones are brushing boots, and the back ones are ankle boots. Those are generally typical uh, type of boot for jumping. The brushing boots will protect the horse from hitting the fences with their shins and their or their cannon bones, and also pre prevent any damage if they brush against each other and the ankle boots will also do that they'll protect against brushing so they're protecting the fetlocks and now I'm just putting on the some tacky wax on the stirrups here so I can make it look like there's a invisible rider on this horse and there you have it. He's all dressed up in his close contact saddle set here. I really like the way that this one looks on him. I think the bay and this two-tone saddle set looks really nice. Um, yeah, he's great to tack up. Uh, awesome horse here. Love this mold. He's so, 
such a great performance for us. And yeah, I can't wait to make more TAC for him. So thanks so much for joining you, me, you guys. Uh, keep watching, like, share, and subscribe to my channel. We have a new English Saddle tutorial coming up soon. We'll be doing the English Saddle panels. So look forward to that. And thanks so much, you guys. Take care.